Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Courtney, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to do this fun makeup tutorial along with a costume DIY. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to see more from me, and let's get into the video. So first what you are going to need is some white polymer clay. I just got mine from Hobby Lobby and it was pretty inexpensive and it came with a lot because you're only going to be using a little bit because the antlers don't take that much. Next you're going to need a headband. I suggest a thicker one because you want to be able to make sure that there's enough room to put the antlers on. Next you're going to need a hot glue gun and some hot glue sticks to adhere everything to your headband. Or if you want a heavier hold you can use E6000 but make sure you are in a heavily ventilated area. Next, you're going to need a lot of flowers, anything really that you want to decorate your headband. I'm going to be making a flower crown around the antlers. First, what I am doing is I am cutting my block of polymer clay, just a third of it pretty much. You don't need that much really to make the antlers themselves. This is actually my first attempt at using polymer clay and making the first pair of antlers. I actually ended up making a second pair because I messed up and I bought the wrong clay. So this clay that I'm using, it is the Primo Sculpey clay. I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. And I did not read really the label of what it is used for. And you bake the clay, it turns into a eraser-like material. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted to be able to sand these down once I was done. But that wasn't the case because like I said, I bought the wrong clay, but pretty much this is just, you can use this on any type of clay, the type of method that I'm using right now. As you can see, I just pretty much wrapped around the second antler part for the antlers itself. And I was hoping to sand it down, but I couldn't. So once you cook this stuff, it pretty much stays how it is. So I suggest smoothing it out just a little bit more, but this is pretty much the the first pair of antlers that I made. And you wanna make sure that you bend them to look like antlers. Cause like I said, when you cook it, they do stay like this. But here are the actual antlers that I'm going to be using for the tutorial. I have already painted them using acrylic paint and I use this matte clear enamel and I sprayed it on there because whenever you paint them they do tend to be a little bit shiny and I wanted it to have a very nice matte finish when they were done. So here they are. I didn't bother painting the bottom because they're going to be covered up anyway. So first what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be mapping out where I want the antlers to sit on the headband. This is completely up to you again. I realized that they kind of look like moose antlers if I put them too far down. So I wanted to put them a little higher up. My mom actually helped me. I'm using this silver Sharpie to mark on the headband where they're going to sit because I strongly advise you have someone help you with this because it is really hard to tell where they're going to sit on your head. So first I'm adding a generous amount of hot glue to the bottom and remember hot glue works really fast so you kind of want to put this on there as fast as possible before it starts drying. And I'm just adhering it to the headband where I marked it and then I'm just going to do the exact same thing to the second antler. And I actually ended up not liking how far apart they were so I actually moved the first one just a little bit closer to the second one that I glued on there. But next what you're going to want to start doing is just decorating. This is again completely up to you. I ended up using these first two red flowers and I glued them on either side of the antlers just kind of map out what I wanted to do because it is a lot easier to work from the outside in instead of trying to do it the opposite way around. But this is completely up to you how you decorate it. I ended up adding some of these berries on the side and then some little white flowers and a bunch of fall leaves because I was going for a very autumn fall-ish type of fawn. But this is how it ended up and I'm really proud of it and I think it turned out really great. And awkward thumbs up, yay, go Courtney. 
So next we're gonna do is start on the makeup. You wanna start with a clean face and put a primer on. I'm just using my antlers to keep my hair back. And then I'm gonna start with the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. I'm pretty much just doing my basic foundation routine right now. Uh, this foundation is actually really, really dark for me. I have very pale skin, and I suggest using a brush, but my brush broke, and I could not find the other one that I normally use, so I'm just kind of using my fingers. Next, I'm going to use my Rimmel Stay Matte Press Powder, which is really light because that's actually my skin tone, and this kind of mattifies the foundation even more and kind of takes away the Oompa Loompa-ish coloring to it. Next, I'm going to take my Wet n Wild bronzer, and this is where we're really going to start shaping the fawn face. You're going to want to use a lot of this bronzer, and I've seen a lot of people change the color palette for this. I'm just going for the basic brown deer slash fawn look, but I've seen a lot of people use pinks and teals, and I think they look really cool, but I'm just kind of doing the basic mapping out for it. Again, you can use any color you want. I'm just going with brown. And I'm doing that to both sides of my face, putting it on the hollows of my cheeks all the way up my temple and onto my forehead and across the very top of my hairline. You don't want to do it all over your forehead because we are going to be putting some illuminator there to highlight those areas. That's pretty much all I'm doing is just putting it along my hairline and on my forehead and on my cheeks. And then of course I am just chiseling out my chin and then I am going to blend it down through my neck because my neck, as you can see, very, very white compared to the bronzer on my face. So I am just trying to make it look a little bit more blended and so my neck doesn't look like a snowy forest right down there. So right now, I don't know why I didn't film the type of blush that I'm using right now, but I'm pretty much just using a cream blush and I'm just adding a little bit more color to kind of tone down on all the browns that are going on in my face. It adds a very nice tint to it. Next, I'm using the NYX Liquid Illuminator on my face, and we are going to put this everywhere that the bronzer is not. I'm pretty much in the regular T-zone. I'm doing it on my forehead, right where we didn't put the bronzer, because like I said, we're going to be putting some illu illuminator there. I cannot speak today. And then we're going to go down the bridge of my nose, just to highlight that. I'm going to put some on my chin also, just a little bit down there. And then I'm going to put some right on my cupid's bow, just to highlight that area right up underneath the nose. Next, I'm taking this NYC. This is actually a cream eyeshadow, but I like to use it to contour the sides of my nose. And I am also extending it all the way up to my brow bone, right up underneath the eyebrow, because it adds a nice added texture once we start doing the actual eye makeup. And then I'm just going in with a little bit more bronzer to kind of make the contour pop just a little bit more. And then I'm going on the tip of my nose because I'm just accenting this just a little bit more because we are going to be covering up the tip of the nose with black to make the actual fawn nose. And then I'm just adding a little bit more illuminator to illuminize that space just a little bit more. Then I'm using this geometric eyeshadow palette. As you can see, I use it a lot. And we're going to be taking this matte pink color up there. We're going to be putting it on our lids pretty much to make our eyelids matte as possible because we're going to be putting a lot more things on top of it and it adds as a very nice base. Next we're using the CoverGirl Bombshell. I'm pretty sure this is in the color Copper. And I'm putting this on top of the base that we just set. And then I'm going back in with the pencil again to contour just a little bit more. And then I ended up taking some bronzer on a angled brush and contouring the tip of my nose just a little bit more because the pencil wasn't really contouring it as much as I wanted it to. 
Next, we're using this darker color from the palette and we're gonna put it on our outer V. Don't worry, we are going to blend the crap out of this. Now, if you wanna smoke your look, I suggest using more of this color or any dark color that you want. I didn't want too much of a crazy smoky look, so it is just pretty much very neutral for me right now. Then I'm taking the same color and the same angled brush that I was using on my nose and just filling in my eyebrows. I don't want to overdo them with the fawn look because the eye makeup is already gonna be a lot. Now we're gonna do an eyebrow dance. Next, I'm going in with my e.l.f. liquid eyeliner and I'm just doing my regular wing, so not really anything special here. <laughs> then I'm using this Wet n Wild Mega Last. It's just an eyeliner pencil and we are going to be using it to extend our inner corner down. It, this is a make or break for the makeup itself. You don't wanna overdo this, but you also don't wanna underdo it. So I'm pretty much just extending it on both sides and I'm trying to make it as even as possible. Then I'm just gonna fill it in. I did end up using a black eyeshadow to put in there also. Then I'm using this other pencil or to make the whites of my eyes pop just a little bit more. Then I am extending my waterline down underneath it to simulate doughy eyes. Get it? Like a doe, a deer, a fawn. Get it? I'm so punny. I do not connect this to the inner corner because I just don't think it looks good on my eyes, but you can do that if you want to. You can experiment. Now is the fun part where it really comes together. This is where you're going to start making the dots on your face. You can put as many dots or as little dots as you want. I find that it is beautiful when you just have the simplicity in it of just putting a few dots here and there. And then I'm just blending it out a little bit so it's not as harsh. Now I'm starting with the nose and I'm using a felt tip eyeliner. I'm pretty sure it's Rimmel and I'm just starting with a V on the tip of my nose. This is really easy to map out. And then I'm just going to extend down my nostrils on the side. I do cover my entire nose all the way down to my septum because my nose is very pointy and it curves up at the end. So everyone can see down up underneath my nose if I don't completely black out my entire nose. But you're more than welcome to change the way that you do your nose. This is just the way that I like to do it. And I'm just gonna fill the entire thing in and my camera actually stopped recording at some point so the angles might change a little bit. But right now I'm just extending a line from my nose down towards my lip. I do not connect it to my lips. Some people do but I just don't like it because it there's too much distance between my nose and my lip and it kind of looks weird. Now I'm taking the exact same eyeliner and lining my top lip only because the top lip is gonna be the only black lip. We wanna keep the bottom lip very nude. Now I'm taking the same felt tip eyeliner and filling in the top lip. And then I'm going to go in with a black eyeshadow from the same palette that I've been using and I'm just gonna dab it on the lip to mattify it and this also helps keep it from spreading down to the lower lip it will spread a little bit but not too much now I'm just taking that same pencil and lining my lower lip and then you are done with the makeup yay do a happy dance because you're amazing and you achieved the greatest thing in life like I said, you guys, you could literally pick these costume pieces right out of your closet or go to Goodwill and get them because I wanted to keep it very simple and focus more on the makeup and the headpiece. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Don't forget to hit like because I worked really hard on this video for you guys. And I can't wait to extend the Spooktober series even farther. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.